Hello everyone, welcome along to my favourite track in the world, Spa Francorchamps in Belgium. And it's the third week of our Community Legends Challenge. And we're looking for some proper uh, drivers to qualify through into our final, which is next week. We've already had uh, five from week one, where we raced at Hockenheim in the GT3 car. Last week it was Silverstone National Circuit in the first iteration of the Cup car. And this week, we're in the WEC car, the RSR, newly launched for Race Room. And doesn't it look sexy? A man that knows all about this car and has been with me the last couple of weeks in this virtual commentary box, El Bamba. It is quite a beast, this machine. Yeah, it's uh, awesome to see the new 911 RSR in Race Room. It's a fantastic car on the track. We're really excited when we got, uh, got it this year. Uh, we absolutely love it. It's our new toy, so um, yeah, it's cool to see them. Let's see how they're going to race it. And is it much different to drive in comparison to what we've seen before? Because we've got a, quite a few drivers uh, that have participated already uh, in our re week one competition back this week, but they didn't necessarily make an appearance last week. Yeah, no, it's definitely very, very different. Um, obviously, Going from what we did in the GT3R, this is um, really, really a custom built race car. I'd probably say the only similarity is maybe the door handles. So, um, in in terms of the real world, so um, yeah, it's very, very different to what uh, they would have been used to. I'm not sure how it goes in uh, the race room sim, but uh, for us on track, it's very different. Obviously, in the real world, our uh, ABS, non ABS, um, all that sort of stuff. Plenty of success already in this car in the World Endurance Championship and across the pond in America in the IMSA Championship and uh, including one of the very few races that actually took place this year. The Daytona 24 hours. Let's take a look at what Earl Bamba looks like as well. Here it is. Daytona is uh, first race of the season. Winning in a different category will be something special. It's a legendary track. We're always waiting for this moment for finally the race to start and, uh, and go for the fight. I mean, we're sitting on pole position, so I think uh, we got pretty good chances. For sure, everybody wants to finish on the top, but we all know how difficult this is. This is such an important race, so we have our most important race, uh, the first race of the season. I think the pace is going to be good, the weather is perfect, and the drivers are all up to the task. I think we're in good shape this year. I hope it works out. It would be, it would be a big box to take off and something I would be very proud of. We're here to, to win. I think uh, I personally feel very confident in what we have and what we've done. We started on the pole last year and we, we didn't manage to, to finish on the podium, so we're hoping this year is going to be our change of luck and that we can start the front and finish at the front. Had a good start. We were leading from the beginning. No issues with the car. Uh, we're leading at the moment. The last call I had was 17 seconds to B2. Uh, Nick got a fantastic start, even for a little bit of a lead early on. But uh, now both cars very close, running very smoothly, no contacts. Both cars running 1-2 at the moment. We got off a good start. Lauren started us. And we managed to jump 9-11 to stop. Got to lead. Pulled a bit of a gap. Now the night starts. At the moment we're running P1. All seems okay. Porsche 1-2. BMW just got us after the last pit stop, but the race is still long and uh, we are looking forward to the last 20 hours. Oh, it's like a teaser, Earl, because that was only the first couple of hours. What happened at the end? Oh, um, at the end we finished 2-3, three, uh, two, three. so double podium for Porsche uh, on their debut of the 911 RSR in America. Very nice. Uh, are you still supporting that beard? Uh, yes, it's a semi-isolation <laughs> beard. Semi-isolation beard, I like it. Uh, right, here are the qualification uh, numbers from last week. And you may notice that a few changes. Tim Heinemann uh, losing 18 points after contact with uh, 
uh, DeMarco. We take this very, very seriously. Uh, and any contact and uh, overzealous driving is penalised. And so Team Henman, uh, Heinemann, sorry, uh, dropping out of the top five and therefore not qualifying. The other big mover, Kirill Antonov, uh, he also lost points but stays in the top five and therefore will qualify into our final week next week. The big mover, the lucky man, Nikodem Wisniewski moves up into fourth position. Uh, a busy pole who's always uh, with us in race room but also in plenty of other uh, platforms as well and so him and Kevin Ziggy were racing last night on a different platform and had good success uh, they will be happy to see themselves through and racing with us in the finals next week here's a man who was seen each week and uh, unfortunately Joachim Uranea has yet to get himself into the finals but presumably as we roll through these different weeks it gets a little bit easier uh, although I suppose it does depend on how comfortable each is with the particular cars. How easy will it have been, Earl, for these drivers to adjust uh, to a brand new model? They've only had the opportunity to test this car qualifying for this event. It's very, very difficult actually because I think it, from my limited experience, it takes a lot of time. Um, time and practice to get these guys um, you know and these cars perfectly on the limit so I think it's sort of leveled the playing field um, for everybody we see quite a few new names obviously this week into um, the race and I think that's also because it's partly a new car where um, you know no one's really had a huge amount of time with this car to um, you know probably fully understand it it's gonna I'm sure that everyone's done a lot of um, hours in the sims as well to get on pace with the new car and learn it and uh, you know we talk about people struggling in this field but there's hundreds upon hundreds of people trying to get into this race uh, trying out on race room each week so it's uh, not an easy feat just to make the show each uh, week with us here uh, including Actually, then, if you do search down the list enough you will find my name or you would have uh, perhaps not gone that far, but uh, 5,000 people uh, tried to qualify this week into the spa uh race. I was around when I tried 500th, um, which actually wasn't bad, about five seconds off the ultimate pace, um, which I was happy about, kind of jumping in. But I was worried about last week, uh, you said you were going to go out there, challenge me and beat me. So presumably you were only about three seconds off, right? No, actually, I spent my my whole time consumed on um, trying to trying to practice for the IMSA race at the moment. So I actually haven't had a chance to do it. But where did you end up, mate? Did you? I didn't check. Stay five hundreds? Uh, definitely not. And I'm a, I'm very proud of you because I was expecting you to say yes and just uh, say that you'd managed to out qualify me and, and leave it at that. But yep, indeed, commitment for Porsche. Works drivers uh, represented in uh, these real life championships that are happening each week in the virtual world and uh, very important for Porsche uh, to be at the top end of the field in all of those. Uh, I think I'm racing in the, vir uh, no, I'm commentating on the virtual Super Cup uh, on Saturday uh, as well as IMSA on Thursday. So plenty of uh, Porsches to talk about throughout the week. Uh, here is Eran Yoyovsky, another man who last night um, became champion on a completely different platform. So super impressive to see these guys jumping around platforms day in, day out and performing at such a high level, Earl. Yeah, it's it's really, really amazing. We were discussing the other day, we were doing a bit of testing and uh, someone was talking about even changing between cars, not even between a platform, and that it's taking minimum one day to get used to the platform again and then drop jumping back if you're used to the car another half a day so the amount of time um, and commitment that these guys are throwing at this it's really um, like serious sports everyone talks about gaming but gaming is becoming a serious sport um, around the world and I don't know about you but I sweat and feel <laughs> absolutely mentally exhausted when I've sat on the sim all day yeah absolutely uh, very much concur with that one uh, and I can't get to sleep when I do these comms so at least it's early morning for you but uh, you know seven o'clock in the evening finishing at nine o'clock it takes me hours just to wind down and i'm not even driving so i don't know what it'd be like for for guys all the way across the world having to either do this in the middle of the night you must not sleep at all it must be very tricky 
Uh, I think I've got an so, advantage this week. Go on. Because America, it's morning for me when I do the race. I must have an so, advantage slightly. A little bit of coffee and on you on on you go. Yep, exactly. So qualifying's just started. I was about to say that. Qualifying's just started. Uh, we have a 10-minute session qualifying. That will set the grid for race one, and then it's a full reverse grid for race two. If you're looking at your if you're well known to race room and you're looking for your mates and they might not be on here remember we've already got 10 qualifiers that were not able to qualify into this so tim yarshall leahandro vela kevin siggy nikodem riznevsky and kirill antonov qualified uh, last week vince banky moritz lerner mark gasser emir chian and jack keithley qualified in week one guys that missed out in week one jacob boginski erhan yovsky jesper erickson martin barner and julian kuntz all really really well-known drivers and i noticed that we've got jesper erickson back we've got briginski back we've also got julian kuntz back and yoyovsky back so plenty of very very fast drivers that just perhaps had a bit of a messy one at hockenheim uh, and expect to see them at the sharp end of the field i also noticed for the first time we've got alexander dorniden uh, who is sometime champion uh, in race room, perhaps more known for his front wheel drive escapades than rear wheel drive escapades. Uh, and you'll also notice as we filter through some of our drivers, we've got quite a few privateers, uh, which is cool to see. I did notice one driver uh, that said um, his name of his team was looking for a team. I, I quite like that kind of, um, you know, a, driving a car around a racetrack with a big sponsor me logo on the side of the car definitely definitely it's um i was really surprised with how many privateers are this weekend it's quite cool that's uh our race livery for this season currently on track with the 912 and i think it's going to go straight to the top of the time sheets and looking at this track and qualifying with only a 10 minute qualifying and such a long lap just over two minutes they're only going to get a maximum of five time laps so there's a lot of pressure compared to last week where we had a one minute lap and you could sort of get 10, 12 laps in there. Um, when you choose your resets back to the start of the, the lap is going to be really critical. Spa, Francochon, my favorite track in the world. Beautifully modeled in race room. I can't count on one hand how many uh, races over the last couple of weeks we've commentated on uh, Spa Frankel shot uh, all slightly different in every different platform but uh, ultimately the same layout that provides fantastic overtaking opportunities great slipstream but also you need to be technically good through the middle sector uh, and it really does require a complete driver Earl to be fast around here yeah, it's one of the best tracks in the world. Obviously, you've got this fantastic combination of high speed and low speed corners. It's really, really difficult to set up the car because you want to be fast on the straights and run low downforce, but you need a lot of downforce to get through the middle sector as well. So it's all about that compromise. And uh, then obviously combined with really high tire deck um, throughout a, a race run as well. And doing the Spa 24 hour race in GT3 is one of the most fun races that you could do, 72 cars on track. When you work that out, that's more or less a car every 80 meters on track. And uh, it's phenomenally cool uh, to go, first of all, during the day and then all through the night in all different weather conditions. It's a little bit of madness. Do have a little bit of experience with that, not in a GT3 car, but in the Fun Cup. They have 160 cars around Spa. 25 hour race uh, in the middle of July. Sadly, I don't think it's happening this year, but uh, it's chaos. Um, and I think one of the things that I noticed about that in the night driving is you don't have very much light illuminating a lot of the curbs and corners like you might in other races. Yeah, definitely. I mean, in the last few years, the advancement of technology on lights, um, very, very funny thing um, because when you think about racing you don't think about advancements in technology of the lights but advancement in the lights and the power and the beams of them um, has come a really really long way which is awesome to see to be honest because it helps us uh, immensely and uh, when we do these 24-hour races it's a really really critical thing is uh, having enough light to be able to see but also enough light to be able to judge your speed uh, into the apex because if you can't see the apex it's really difficult to judge your speed on how fast you're going to carry into the corner so um, yeah that helps a lot I'm sure in your fun cup race I think maybe they're probably more like candles 
I don't, they didn't have any advancement in lights. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, so just over halfway through the qualifying session, uh, and we've got most of the drivers having set their first lap time. Uh, Jacob Radinsky for Williams Esports on the pole position. Uh, Simone Pret in second spot. And then David Toccacelli uh, in third position. Um, the very first lap time was Marco Piek, and he uh, sits now in fourth position. Uh, some names that I was expecting to see a bit higher up the field, Jesper Eriksson. Um, we haven't yet seen Yoyoski uh, with a time. Uh, expect him to pop into the top of the timesheets. And uh, don't forget, if you are new to us, uh, we have a lot of influencers driving with us today. Um, so you do have to turn your head to the bottom of the timesheets um, as uh, Mohamed Nakwib goes up into second spot. Great qualifying uh, effort from him. At the bottom of our timing sheets, then, uh, we have... Uh, I've got to get this right, because, of course, we've got their real names on the timing screens. And we've got their gamer names in my uh, entry list. Here is Gamer Muscle, though. Thank you. James West, uh, Gamer Muscle videos, and he is slowest at the moment. Uh, Gaming Dave, or Dave Gaming, depending uh, on uh, which bit of paper you're reading. Uh, Gaming Dave on our timing screens. Uh, and then we have Reiner Held, and that is Rai, uh, known, better known. Uh, moving up through the order, Ralph Hauser. Uh, I've got to get this wrong. Everyone's going to laugh at me. Abgefahren. There we go. Says it at the bottom. Uh, Xavier Sanchez in 19th position. Uh, and he is better known as Heike 360 ES. And then Yaroslav Honzik. Kind of, I don't think he's an influencer because he's such a fast driver. Interestingly, he's sponsored by or part of the Acrol Vision team. He's better known as Jardie on YouTube. Very well known YouTuber. We are missing a few uh, drivers from our influencers this week who struggled with the new name. I pronounce it like I'm from the Middle East. My producer's taking the mickey out of me. Uh, so, where are we now? Two and a half minutes remaining. Hopefully a lot of people on their uh, final lap. yoyoski has got himself up into sixth position behind Mohamed Alif. Now, I think Mohamed Alif is one of the best sim drivers from the middle uh, from from Asia. I seem to think I might be wrong here, but he was the Asian qualifier for uh, the McLaren Shadow project back in the day. Um, maybe wrong, maybe right. I think he was also number one qualifier in Asia for Race of Champions. That's why I know his name. Uh, he's uh, qualified well up in fifth position. And just have a look at all the different flags we've got. Yoyovsky Macedonian flag, if you don't know what that one is. Uh, there is no Chinese flag in there, and the Chinese flag wasn't there in the first week either. It was a Turkish flag. Uh, Jesper Eriksson's from Sweden. Uh, we've got the Russian flag. We've got Argentina uh, in there. It Italy, Germany, of course. We've got a Brazilian uh, this week, which is really cool to see. Felipe Hussman, uh, a Malaysian as well. Two Malaysians, in fact. And a really, really international field, Earl. That's really impressive to see. Yeah, it's really awesome to see. And as you were talking about all the different flags and nationalities, I was wondering, has any of these drivers represented um, at the motorsport games that was created and they had the esports racing section? Because I've met the Malaysian representative, so I was wondering if any of our racers have actually represented at the motorsport games. Uh... Uh, that's a t uh, that will be a question for next time. I'll answer you when I've done my research, Al. Uh, <laughs> of course, that that's was, one for the final. Uh, that's one for the finals. Yeah, exactly. That was on a different platform, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean it wouldn't be in this because there are so many drivers now uh, jumping platforms week in or day in, day out. It's so impressive to see. There's Game of Muscle completing a lap. Unfortunately, James West is still 23rd. Um, that's quite surprising that we haven't got as many, I think we've got 27 that we're expecting to see um, finish a lap time. So quite a few people not getting laps in. Uh, anyway, qualifying's over and Braginski, it is on the pole position. And uh, Nakwib in second position. Yoyoski improved up a third ahead of Pret. Tokicelli, then Alif. Uh, Adam Pizneczk, we expect to see right at the sharp end. 
Uh, I have a feeling we saw him uh, in week two, or was it week one? Um, do, 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 just having a quick look through my results. I think it was week one. He was 11th in race one, but he got penalty points. So mm, let's see if he uh, can do a better job in this race. Cars are lined up. As you can see, all the cars look pretty much identical. So this is going to be a nightmare for Earl and I. But uh, we'll do our very best. And at least in sim racing, you uh, do get the locators uh, to show you exactly which battle you are watching, unlike in real life. If this was in real life, I'd be going to the championship director and giving them a slap. We're ready to go racing. Simon Pretz, fourth position. Jacob Boginski on the pole from Nakwib, Yeovsky and Pret, and who has made a good start? Doesn't look like a very good start from Nakwib. A better start from Boginski. Sorry, a better start from Nakwib and Boginski. A few cars diving down the inside. It's a good start from whoever's moved himself up in the second spot there in uh, the all-white machine. Find out as it uh, kind of sorts itself out. We do have four, one spinner at the back. And up through a rouge for the first time. Just make sure at the back of the shot that everyone's managed to get through there. Yes, they have. And now it's a slipstreamer down into the com. Nakwib from Brzezinski. Brzezinski uh, in second. It was Pret who got the good start at the third. Took a jelly fourth. Yuyoski a bad start to fifth. Mohamed Alif moves himself up to sixth with Eriksson seventh. And Varna yeah, down to so not a good start from him and Adam Pijnes down to uh, ninth position so not a great start from him either I'm glad you're all over top of that because it's really really difficult to follow with all the same memories <laughs> uh, everyone's identical just trying to spot a difference in the numbers uh, or something like that but uh, yeah fantastic start by the leader obviously around here it's going to be a big big drafting match as well so Probably uh, equate to a Formula 4 battle or something like that. I did a uh, race at uh, a Spa earlier in the week, and it was definitely that case. We had teams of drivers um, sort of helping each other to break the toe or all pull away from each other. It's on these big straights out the back, um, the back half of the circuit where you notice the most. But as soon as you've broken the toe, then you're sort of away. But it can be up to one second a lap that it's helping you. Um, you drag the others around with you. And uh, Simone Pret looks like he is in that slipstream of Brzezinski through Blanchiment on cold tyres, breathe in and hope that everything sticks. It's pretty much, must be flat though in an RSR uh, through the uh, Eau Rouge and, and Blanchiment. Yeah, it should be easily flat, Eau Rouge, uh, Blanchiment. It's a real, oh, as we have a spinner in the background and uh, a lot of contact going on there as he spun around and came back on track. That source caused mayhem at the back of the field there. I think that was Mohamed Ali because he's now down in 16th position. Look at all these cars fighting over track through La Source and now heading down to Eau Rouge. This is not sensible boys. Get yourselves in line because you're coming up to the fast flick left then uphill right. Oh, lots of curves taken by our Argentine counterpart and he's carried a bit more momentum up the hill. He's trying to find himself a way through but as you say look at the slipstream fantastic and it's a roadblock for Yakim Yurana to try and get away through yeah that's uh, some fantastic racing it's uh, all on I think young and old back there a lot of contact obviously you don't have to worry about that too much as we go three wide uh, through that section of the track which I've never seen in my life before um, and it's fantastic racing at the back here yeah just a reminder that uh, we have points down to 15th position um, and our kind of leading points across the two weeks 29 points was the winner uh, in week two and 31 in week one so uh, you can qualify with 18 points or actually 25 in week one so this is a consistency so uh, points in both races would be key especially if you get the reverse grid and it's I don't think it won't be too hard to make ground up uh, I wouldn't have thought, especially across the 35 minute race that we will have in the second race of the day, but just a reminder that we will flip reverse uh, the whole of this field. Uh, the finishing positions will dictate the grid positions for race two, but in reverse, so whereas last we'll have pole position, and that at the moment is our Brazilian Felipe Hussman, 
uh, down in 23rd position. Uh, and it seems as though we do only have 23 drivers. So we are missing a few from our entry list. And I think one of them is Dawn Day, which is a shame. Yeah, that's a, it's a big shame. You never ever want to miss your, your own race. It's one of my fears in endurance racing. It's exactly why I sleep in my uh, race overalls, is because I'm always fearful I'm going to miss a stint. Uh, you do what? I sleep in my oh, like when we're doing the race. Okay. And <laughs> I sleep no, not no, no, really. Um, I'm always fearful that I'm gonna I'm gonna miss my stint. So um, I had a terrible experience when I first did the mod in LMP1. I had exactly that. They called me right at the last minute. I've never got changed so quick in my life. So I learned from that experience. Always to wear your race suit when you go to sleep during the race. I have a very, very pathetic uh, story to tell about called very late into an endurance race. Uh, I was racing a Citroen C1, so not quite the same as you, Uh But uh, put my race suit on, my phone was in my pocket as I got into the car, didn't realise it, and then I rolled the car, and my phone was found in the gravel trap, having flown out of my pocket and out of the car. Um, amazingly, considering it was an, uh, an iPhone and they, they smash all the time, uh, it wasn't smashed. But uh, yeah, certainly a rush getting changed could spell disaster if you put something on the wrong way around. You don't want to be stuck in a race seat with the wrong way around for an hour and a half, right? I've even had given two left boots. I went to Le Mans Scrutineering <laughs> last year and pulled them out and there was two left boots, so um, you get all sorts. Actually. Did you put them on? Did you go, well, that's really painful. I had to because I had to go through scrutineering and do the parade part of the mall and I didn't have the other spare one so I had to have two left on. I'm, I'm using that, that's a great story, I'm using that uh, next week or maybe even on Thursday if we get the chance to see you. Uh, right, what's going on in the race then? Nakrim is checking out the front of the field, there's plenty of uh, chaos going on further back though. Here is Yaroslav Bonzik uh, and he is fighting with uh, Gamer Muscle. Gamer Muscle is uh, much better start than his qualifying position at the 17th spot here. Yaroslav is being bullied off the circuit. He's lost another space uh, to Gaming Dave and Xavier Sanchez, so Heike 360 ES. And uh, I wonder if Yaroslav has picked up some kind of damage because he's driving quite slowly here. Could he be going into pit lane or has he got a technical problem? No, technical problems don't necessarily mean a car problem. It could mean a connection issue or indeed a steering issue. And by the looks of things, I reckon that's a steering issue. Bouncing off the wall and our uh, one of our influences could be out of here. Yeah, that's actually quite an interesting thing is that most of these games you don't have so much damage, but you can have a technical problem. I was driving the other day and lost my pedals. Just it decided that everything should be flat, including the brake and the throw at the same time. So um, <laughs> Different technical issues to what you could normally have. Normally you wouldn't blow up an engine or something like uh, you could blow an engine or have a gearbox failure. In this, you can have a rig failure, I guess. Is that what you call it? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, makes sense to yeah. me. Side by side, Simon oh. Pretz trying to get himself into the top six here. He's banging doors, presumably here with Jesper Eriksson. Uh, Eriksson is going to lose out there yes he is so he drops a seventh and prep down the inside as they now descend uh, from the top of the hill down the bottom of the hill that uh lecom is the highest point of the circuit this whole kind of shortened section designed in the 1980s to shorten the original uh, spa front of shop and uh, just kept the spirit of uh, that old track so well and considering it is kind of a a newer version it's still such a legendary piece of tarmac and, and it flows so nicely doesn't it yeah it's a fantastic piece of uh, road if anyone hasn't been to spa um, and you're a motor racing fan you definitely need to go and one thing that you know the games or you know the tv you never get the appreciation of how steep this place is like when you go to the bottom of rouge it's literally three to four stories straight up and as you're going up there, all you see is sky when you get to top of the roof. So it's a phenomenal piece of road and um, you get that funny feeling in your stomach when you get to the top uh, in a quick race car. So it's really, really cool. Um, and everyone talks about going to Spa or winning at Spa. Does the steering kind of load up with the compression at the bottom of the hill? You feel that in the yeah. wheel? 
Yes, definitely. You feel it uh, in the wheel and you notice if you've got some power or steering issues, it's going to show up uh, in that part of the track. It's, I think it's one of the highest loads in the world is the bottom of the rouge there. And yet people still decide to go side by side through it. Absolutely crazy. Have to take that curve on the left hand side to try and straighten up the right and therefore not do too much in terms of uh, track limits. Of course, in the real world, track limits are kind of policed by marshals standing on the side of the track, but in the virtual world, quite easy to do because if the car goes off track, then the game will ping you. Definitely. And if you've done an endurance race around here, you'll know that shift change is about 8 o'clock and then they switch the track limits off for the, the guys at night, especially in the Spa 24. Um, he doesn't actually pay attention, so all track limits <laughs> go off at about 8 o'clock and you can do what you want. He does, I reckon he just goes for dinner and then just forgets to turn up and then wakes up in the morning and goes, oh, oh god, I've, I've, got, I've got a job. <laughs> he just kind of wakes up for it. So it's a, a, amazing that that happens in the Spa 24 hours every year. It can be very interesting to see the Spa 24 hours end of October. Uh, this year uh, is going to be potentially a very cold and wet weekend but uh, there will be uh, GT3 versions of the 911 participating and uh, Timo Bernard usually runs uh, his team there will you be running a team out? We're, we're entered yes we're entered with a Pro-Am car so um, first time for Spa there so we're really looking forward and looking at the timing sheets what's happening to Nakui? because he was the leader of the race and now he's dropped back down seventh place. I'm not sure what's actually happened to him. Um, maybe our race director can give us a hint in the ear about exactly what happened to him because he was checked out in front, miles up the road, and now he's uh, back down in seventh. Good spot. You're doing uh, my job better than me. Um, seventh position for the clip. We're right on board with him here. Uh, presumably has the pace to make his way up through the field again, but he's gifted Brzezinski the uh, win at the moment and Jojowski in second position that's a very very strong one two at the moment. Piek has got himself up in the third spot he had a pretty shocking first lap he was down in seventh or eighth spot but he's got himself back up third so that's good effort and then prep fourth uh, we just saw him a few moments ago fighting the sixth position so I think we've lost another one out of those leading contenders and uh, Prep moves himself up to third now, ahead of Priyek. That's going into Lecom, just ahead of this little battle here. Ericsson, Varna, and now Nequib and Pinchec. Now, who is the driver that is missing? I reckon Tocicelli should be a bit further up as well. He's now in ninth, and I'm pretty sure he was in our top four position. So a few drivers having issues. And Mohamed Alif now in the 20th position. And actually, I see only 21 cars on the leaderboard. So we've lost um, Abigafarin as well. Uh, he's gone. And another driver, I think, is out of this race uh, totally. So uh, a race of attrition, would you believe, considering we're on, uh, uh, we're on the real world? Yeah, I think um, it's called internet issues. It's quite ironic because if you remember back to the club, we were once having... Uh, all the internet issues and now it seems that some of our gamers are having the internet issues which is a really difficult thing in the gaming world if you don't have fast enough internet because you're sort of out of play and if you ever see in the stream a car jumping it's normally their ping rate's too slow um, I'm learning this already as well it's sort of when the car falls back on top of you in front of you which is a very odd thing when you're trying to race and concentrate as we've got a fantastic battle for the lead now hotting up two incredibly fast sim drivers whatever platform you put them in and they are absolutely going at it car parked on the start finishing line that's a bit strange well he's now retired out of the race yoyoski looks to the inside he's got the rear the white rear wing and brzezinski has the black rear wing just ahead of him that's the only way other than the numbers that you're going to be able to dis uh, to work out between them uh, who they are brzezinski for Williams, AAA Esports for Yoyoski, up through Radion, over the curves, and now the long
uphill drag along the Kemmel Strait and then into Lecom. The next opportunity, the best of it, overtaking opportunity. Yoyovsky is forced to the outside line. There's also battling going on at the back of screen for third position. Yoyovsky all the way around the outside, gives him the inside for the next part of Lecom, but it's the third part as well. They're still side by side. Great respect between the two drivers, a little bit of touring car banging, and Yoyovsky shuts the door into the Bruxelles corner. Two lines through there, and Yoyovsky has managed to do it. A classic spa Francochon move when there is respect between drivers. Yeah, that was fantastic racing, and that's typical spa as well, where you can go side by side, uh, for so many corners, um, switching back between each other. It's what what's, makes racing so great around this circuit. And uh, they've really sort of broken away from the rest of the field. They're in a race of their own. It's going to be interesting to see now um, if they sort of draft each other and there's another fight for the lead. With probably only about two, three laps left in the race, it's uh, coming down to it. See Yaroslav Honzik in the pits, unfortunately, struggling with internet. Brandon Abraham, the man we haven't seen for Team Pilot, uh, sits in 10th position. Uh, he is just ahead of our Argentine driver, Urena, who's qualified uh, as a hot lapper in every single week of our competition so far, but as yet hasn't managed to get himself into our final. And our final is next week with a couple of works Porsche drivers for Earl to take the mickey out of. Uh, we don't know what or where they will be driving yet. There will be a vote on the Porsche Instagram channel, the actual Porsche at Porsche Instagram channel with millions and millions of viewers, and you will be able to vote which uh, car you would like to race. That was a dive bomb and a half, and uh, Nakweeb has lost the position at uh, La Source. Yeah, that was a bit naughty. Uh how big of a dive back because it just relied on the grip opening the door. Um, but there was really, really good spatial awareness or racing awareness to know that that was coming because there was could quite easily be the race over and could have got turned around. Now he's in the draft. Let's see if he can make that uh, position back. Battle for, to, for third position, Simon Pret trying to go around the outside of Payek. It didn't work out for him, but there was a change further back. I think Varna is... Oh, Varna's lost position, he's lost five or six positions. He's obviously facing the wrong direction because he's now gone from sixth to 13th. There he is recovering, but a mistake. Oh, and a lot of damage. He's had a hard hit. There's not that much damage on this particular race. And yet that car looks very second hand. Yeah, that's a huge damage. Uh, it's probably the most damage we've seen uh, from a racer uh, from the whole season so far. So. Uh, Obviously, uh, with the creep, there's probably been something go on because they were around that sixth, seventh position. So, um, who knows what happened there? Well, it could be a classic Lewis Hamilton in the braking zone at Lecom because uh, you're taking high speed, and if you've got somebody to the outside of you and try and squeeze them, you generally end up in the barriers. And that's really that's the only hard thing to hit because by the time you spin to the right hand side, you've rubbed off so much speed, you probably wouldn't cause that amount of damage. But total speculation. Uh, here's Felipe Hoosman moving up into 16th spot and uh, he is, uh, yeah, so he's, he's got a bit of work to do but I think he's quite a long way back after an accident at the start of the race so you can see his best lap is a, a 2.15 dead uh, which is quite interesting really because uh, the race that I was commentating on Sunday, completely different platform uh, similar cars and they were doing 215 so even if we're on different games here all and you know it's the same track and therefore it's about the same amount of time to get around uh, this spa frank Lachance circuit yeah they're getting really really accurate these days with how long it takes um, or really simulating the lap times to the real car so it's very 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 impressive and just looking at that onboard shot it's fantastic to see how detailed it is inside the car it's really exactly like uh, what it's like inside that car which not many people have seen and then if you were wondering on the stream from a non-racing background why the car behind is gaining time on the straight that's what we talk about drafting um, basically the car in front's punching a big hole and you're getting sucked along into it and uh, that's why we see that fantastic racing here because the straights are so long and that drafting effect that we talk about is so big here 
Joki Morena up to ninth position now, uh, just ahead of Castera. And uh, they've had a great little battle, but you can see Varna now down in 13th position. Aquim, 14th position. And uh, Naquib is now up ahead of Tocicelli. So that's uh, his recovery. Presumably, he'll be looking to try and get onto the tail of Jesper Eriksson. As I think a problem for Sanchez. He's down in 19th spot. Um, and I just think I just saw him to send down the timing screen. 35 seconds left of this race, so are we going to get another lap in? It's going to be quite tight, but I'm going to speculate that Yoyoski is going to cut the beam before we get to zero, and therefore one more tour. He's got himself ahead of Brzezinski. He would want no more laps to allow Brzezinski a slipstream and uh, opportunities to pass. It's going to be very tight, isn't it? Oh, could be the checker flag. It's going to be time incredibly by. close. <laughs> I don't finish line is. I'm going to call check it. Well, he's weaving. Is that the end of the race? Yes, it is. Check a flag. Yovsky has taken victory ahead of Brzezinski. And Payek in third. Pret looks like he'll be fourth position. Uh, Ericsson in fifth. It'd be good to see the cars going through the final chicane. Oh, we've got plenty of cars already through. Naquib, Tocicelli, Abram, Urena, and Kisteri, your top 10. Uh, not really sure who we're going to see on the pole position uh, for the second race because we've got a couple of cars uh, who have dropped out in the first one. Yaroslav Honzik's having hardware issues, uh, so potentially he might not be able to take the start. And uh, if Mohamed Alif takes the pole, then that will be uh, quite an improvement. Uh, so, Yoyovsky, Brzezinski, Payek. Then Pretz, Eriksson, Naquib, Tocicelli, Abram, Urena, and Castera, your top 10. And then Adam Pizniec in 11th. And that great little battle a bit far, further down. Okay, so that was, uh, it's just a bit tricky with the cars looking the same, but uh, we did, I think we did all right, Earl. Another race to come. I think we're doing, yeah, we're doing not too bad. And the, the entertainment is, massive and the battles are amazing it's just trying to work out who's actually in that battle yeah exactly oh look car <laughs> please don't do this to this in the final that's all we can request that is a very very good request coming from the expert as well coming from the works factory driver they'll listen to you more than they listen to me that's for sure 20 seconds before the start of our second race this is a total reverse grid in theory Yaroslav Honzik on the pole position with Mohamed Alif in second spot. Let's see if Honzik has fixed his hardware issues. He may have done, but it was a bad start. And Sanchez has got a great start from just behind him. And I think Sanchez is going to have the lead going into turn one. He does. Everyone's going to get through left source cleanly. And there's a lot of banging doors further back. Look at that. Three, four wide as they head down towards Lassau, down towards uh, 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 Rouge for the first time. Sanchez. And this is really the battle between uh, our influencers right at the front. It's uh, always fantastic to see them start out leading these races. Sanchez ahead of Honzik. That's a good effort from that great start. But look, he's now punching the, the hole in the air for everybody to slipstream down towards Le Com. And he's managed somehow to hold on for this first lap. But it's going to be a big old train of cars, I reckon, following uh, Hike 360 ES. We nearly had... Uh, some influences picking up some decent points uh, in our last race at Silverstone. I think, if I'm not wrong, they get double points if they do score points. Is that correct? I think that was a nuance of the, of the point system. So uh, that will really help me. No, I think I made that one up. I don't know. Sounds like a good idea, though. Uh, Sanchez, Ponzik, and then Mohamed Ali in third position. Uh, Game of Muscle in, uh, in fourth spot. And then I cannot for the life of me pronounce, I'm not going to try to pronounce that name, but I think whoever that was is just exiting. Oh, Mohamed Ali exiting stage right. Oh, that's a shame for our Singaporean. And uh, he is now at the tail of the field. What about progress from our leaders in race one? Where are they? Yoyovsky, 16th. Brzezinski, 14th. And Payek in 
19th spot. But actually, we saw much bigger fields the first two races, so it should be easier for these guys to get through the field, especially with a place where you can overtake and a long race of 35 minutes. Yeah, exactly. And also the draft effect is a lot bigger than a normal track, so it should be easier for these guys to make their way through. Oh, as we have got a couple turned around in the last corner. And who was that? Was that, uh, yes, it was Game of Muscle. Good pick up from our director there. And he's now to the tail of the field as well. Look at the cars ahead, though. Four or five wide coming into La Source. Oh, how on earth have they all got through there? They're still going four wide. David Tocicelli on the outside. I don't know, have a clue who's with him. They've all kind of sorted themselves out. There's a bit of an overlap further back. Tocicelli in 10th position. Yoyoski is in there. Held Pinchek. Uh, Ericsson and Brett all in there as well. And Atokicelli is the man punching the hole. It looks as though Brzezinski's got a run though and he's got himself up to ninth position. So uh, considering Yoyovsky only in 11th, that's been a great start for Brzezinski. Yeah, it's uh, fantastic battles. And obviously this is the final week to make the final. So that's why everyone's fighting so hard. It's their last chance to get into the finale. Yoski looking to try and find a way past Heike 360. But for the moment, can't find a way through. And has a little bit of a gap as well to Felipe Hoisman. With uh, Varner, Johannes Varner, who was inside the top 10 in that first race, but he's uh, dropped down the uh, he dropped down the order. He's now in fourth position for this one. So I think he has the pace as we see a battle for the lead here. And Honzik trying to go around the outside of Fanyes. That is a brave move, and I think that's going to work for him because there isn't that third part like there is at Lecom. Great move from Yabie. And yeah, that was a strong, bold move uh, straight around the outside. You don't see that very often in a normal race car. And oh, as we see one go massively off, I'm not sure who that was, but there was a huge crash. And that was Felipe Hoisman, who was in third spot, the Brazilian, now at the tail of our field, and the field is so compact. The one mistake like that and it is definitely game over or certainly the inability to qualify. Brzezinski in eighth, he's uh, just getting through the traffic, he's doing a great job of it. Oh, contact and that might be a penalty for Brzezinski. We've seen in other races how seriously they take contact and he's turned around. Aquim, I think it is, who's dropped to 20th spot. Another driver dropping down the order. Was that Yoyoski's up to eighth? And Brzezinski down to 11th, so actually he uh, he didn't benefit from that contact whatsoever. Yeah, I think in the stream we just saw him pull up to the side um, to maybe try to readdress. I'm not sure what's going on there, but um, if he's done that, that's uh, quite fair racing to readdress his mistake immediately. Difficult though for him to uh, give Aquim the position back down in 20th spot. Side by side for the lead. Sanchez looks to the inside line. And look who's here. Johannes Varner is going to take advantage of this. And Sanchez uh, into the lead. Goes to defend as they go down the hill here. And this is another place where there are some weird racing lines. And look at that. Johannes Varner says thank you very much. Goes down the inside and demotes Yaslav down to third position. So a great battle for the lead of the race. Yeah, it's a fantastic battle uh, all over, up and down the field right now. As uh, you know, our quick guys that start at the back are trying to make their way through. Um, obviously, these reverse grid races have really, really made it entertaining for us um, throughout the entire series, and also thrown up a whole lot of random results when you start to calculate the points at the end of the weekend as well. And obviously now thrown in Spa, one of the best places to race at in the world. Um, it's great for us. We're just trying to pick out who's who with uh, identical numbers. Xavier Sanchez is doing a great job. It's clear that he has not got the pace to clear off here, uh, but he's holding on and he's doing a nice job of being there as we see Felipe Hussman with another mistake. So he's down to 21st and actually, sadly, Abram, Brandon Abram is down in 20th spot. So he's made an error too through Blanchiment. Honzik has the lead of the race, but Varna in second with Honzik, uh, uh, sorry, Sanchez has the lead of the race. And we've got our Russian driver, uh, Igor Origanyov, I think is how you say it, ish, uh, in fourth position with uh, Leonard Peter Kripper in fifth spot. 
Uh, I couldn't see that because it was all pixelated on my screen, but it's not actually that hard to pronounce. Uh, either way, they're relatively well behaved through La Source. There's still plenty of changes on the leaderboard, I can see. Uh, Yaslav in 8th, Krasinski in 11th, Adam Pizhnesh in 10th uh, position, Jesper Eriksson in 9th, and uh, Simone Pret not making up much ground. He's still 13th, Martin Piek 15th. So actually, it's going to be a really strange leaderboard when we start calculating those points out. Yeah, definitely. And Nakweb, who was at the back of the field um, after the first two laps, is already back up to 14th. So, you know, there's battles up and down the field and people um, sort of moving up and down super quick um, as these battles form and a lot of contact. Um, I wouldn't want to be the race steward to sort of dissect exactly what's happened. Yeah, but do you know what I love about this? Oh, it's a spin. I think that might be Jesper Eriksson. Yes, it is. Gosh, look at me. Uh, Ericsson out, and that is game over for Ericsson. That's a shame for the virtual drivers by TX3. What I'm loving here is, in, in the real world, you would never see this much side-by-side -side racing around spa Frankfurt. There would be contact, for sure. But somehow, uh, and considering how hard it is with your perpetual vision uh, in gaming, not being able to see to the left or your right, these guys are doing a great job of running side-by-side -side through Le Com, and through Fanier, is it even through Blanchiment? Yeah, the, the fairness of the racing has uh, been phenomenal. Oh, we've got one off in the gravel trap as well, and it's all going on. As soon as we start talking about something else, uh, something else happens as that's uh, Onsik falling out of the top spots. He was in third place. Yeah, I wonder whether that's hardware issues for Onsik because he was uh, having a struggle in race one and uh, just run a little bit wide through campus coming into Stabilo and he's dropped himself now into eighth spot. So Janis Varna leads uh, and then Orgunyov in second position and Sanchez still in third, holding up the influencers uh, flag. Here's Marco Piek in 14th spot. He really needs to make progress because uh, he had the opportunity to qualify, but if he doesn't get many, many points up in this second race, then he will not go through final next week. Yep, and it's still going on up and down the fellas. We've got another whole lot of spinners. As soon as I start talking, there's drama somewhere. Castera is dropping down the leaderboard. There's another one. Pignac, I think, yes, down into 13th. So he's lost the position to Naquib. And uh, Aquin in 16th spot. Mohamed Alif in 17th. Some very fast drivers, very far back as Pret now moves ahead of Payek and, uh, sorry, Pret is ahead of Payek. Now, Quib and Payek are going side by side somewhere, uh, presumably through this section of corners just behind as Yaroslav Honzik now uh, losing, I think, another position. That is to Brzezinski, who's up to eighth. No, it's to Urena, sorry, who's now up to ninth position. Honzik drops to tenth. Yeah, and I saw in the Queeb's car, as we saw it uh, earlier in the lap, he's got huge damage on the front end. So, uh, obviously, been a bit of an incident somewhere on track that we haven't seen. So, we've had about 10 minutes gone of this race. Varna leads. Orogovinov, similar, kind of, uh, in second position. Sanchez in third. Peter Krippner, there he is, in fourth position. Jajowski now up to fifth. And slowly and slowly moving his way up to the head of the field once more. Could he do a double victory? Just missed out in week one. And he's just become a champion on a different platform. So this could be a very good week for the AAA Esports Macedonian. Tokicelli in sixth position. And I think another... Oh, Honzik's dropped now to 20th position. So I think he is out of it. But, uh, Yajowski needs to be super careful of is not making contact. Any contact, and you, it seems to be really, really penalised. The race direction doing a great job of making sure these races are super fair. And if any advantage is made by contact, as we saw from Tim Heinemann uh, in the Silverstone National Circuit in week two, then you will be penalised. And unfortunately, Heinemann, uh, who is uh, a real-world driver in GT4 racing, uh, unfortunately not qualifying into our finals uh, because of the contact that he had at Silverstone. So Yoski needs to make sure these passes are clean. 
Yes, definitely. It's actually really, really difficult in esports racing. If anyone's ever tried, it's really, really hard, especially with the spatial awareness. Um, as Yoski makes it look easy, uh, carving his way up in fourth place. But it is very, very difficult, especially the spatial awareness around your car side to side. If you're right next to someone or not, um, or if you're touching, especially then with the internet, it's really, really hard. So. Uh, these guys are at the top of their game, and uh, you know, the amount of racing, the fairness and respect between the competitors is awesome to see. Yeah, rubber banding, things like that, where the cars don't uh, actually, on track, appear to be where they actually are, and they move around in front of you in an unnatural way, it can really, really put you off. And interestingly, in race room, there isn't the uh, there isn't the spotter system that you find in other platforms. So. Uh, a lot of these drivers will have a third-party software doing the spotting for them. Uh, and the best way uh, of having that spatial awareness is to have a triple screen or even better, uh, VR goggles. And I'm looking forward to investing in VR goggles. That uh, is one way of making yourself faster. Uh, getting yourself a set of those if anybody's selling them over in New Zealand. Here comes a Yoski and uh, a brave place to pass, but he's got the inside line. So an easy move up into third position. I think Yoyovsky, with 21 minutes remaining, could easily get himself a double victory here. Yeah, that would be impressive in the first time we've had a double victory. And speaking of the VR goggles, I've actually got a pair, but I don't know how to make them work. So, no, you need to get yeah. someone to make them work for Thursday, because honestly, it changes everything. Well, I've got so used to the triple screen, I'm not sure I want to change it. As we've seen this huge battle, a huge dive up the inside, and side-side contact uh, coming out of the first corner. I think that was Adam Pizniec, who didn't have a great race one, uh, but he's having a much better race two. We saw him in week one missing out. He's uh, actually officially teammate to Yulovsky uh, at AAA. And uh, leaderboard, somebody else is dropping down. Mohamed Ali has had an issue somewhere, so uh, he's now back down to 19th spot. And here come Pizniec, uh, defending from Tokicelli. Trying to go around the outside. Doesn't work for him. And uh, Peter Krippner is now being uh, dropped down the field. Brzezniewski is the next man to join this group. So let's see how the pole will get through this battle. He is in eighth right now. And he's right on the tail there as uh, Peter Krippner just runs a little bit wide. Uh, which actually sometimes works. It's a weird corner, that one, isn't it, Al? Because you're on the outside there. Somehow you can kind of carry momentum through in a way that other corners wouldn't allow. Yeah, Spa's a real special one, but there's so many different lines. And also that line, it doesn't stay the same the whole weekend or the whole race. It's definitely moving around, so you've always got to search. Um, especially when we go there for the 24, there's lots of grip on the inside of the curve and you see the tracker end up in a really bad condition as the race progresses but um, you know each car is completely different at Spa and in each condition so it makes it so challenging for the drivers. Just under 20 minutes remaining of this race we're not actually even really halfway so that does bode very badly uh, for these guys who are out front with these faster drivers Jojowski and Brzezinski coming through Sanchez under pressure from Pizniesk and uh, he's going to go down the inside but a little bit too late on the brakes. Oh, decides to run side by side through the second part. It uh, doesn't work for him. And there's just battles up and down the field the whole way through. And I'd be really curious if the guys in the background can uh, start calculating the points for us. As that was the second, second place. place man out of the yeah. race. Eagle Ognov has spun at the source. Now that is a very odd place to spin, unless there was a bit of contact. And I hope there wasn't, because uh, the only contact it would have been with would have been with Yeyovsky. So we didn't see it on screen as Brzezinski runs side by side with Sanchez. He's on the outside line, but presumably will be stronger on the brakes into Lecom. He is takes fifth position. Yeovsky is now up to second though. He's got one more car to get himself into the lead of the race. But if that was contact at La Source, which would be a very, very easy place to make contact, such as the, uh, the braking zone at the apex. Imagine, I mean, I don't know how much experience you've got in the virtual world of going around Spa, but 
Earl, when you break into that source, you have to use your head so much to turn it to the apex of the corner to see the apex. If you can't do that in the virtual world, you're almost breaking into that corner blind before turning in and hoping you turn in at the right point to get the apex. Yeah, it's very, very difficult. And obviously, you, we can also talk about sort of um, driver awareness or, or driver signaling. It's sort of like when you go on the motorway um, and you expect that the lane's going to be clear and then someone pulls out just in front of you and you didn't really expect any of those awkward moments if I should pass or not. And you have that on the racetrack as well and it's especially at those places like the source where you know you think the guy in front of you is going wide to almost reach in and then you sort of accidentally end up passing but then you didn't mean to and you have this sort of clumsy contact and that's what makes it really difficult. Here's Brzezinski in the slipstream. Will he be brave enough on the brakes to go past Tocicelli? Tocicelli, one of our faster qualifiers, so probably, yeah, too strong through uh, the bus stop chicane for that pass to make stick. There's something going on a bit further back. Two cars way off the circuit. And uh, Peter Krippner dropping down to eighth position, so presumably it was him. Ahead of him, though, oh, actually, it was Marco Piet, who's just not making any progress whatsoever. And I wonder whether this performance in the second race uh, from him and Simone Prep is going to really endanger them qualifying into our final. Yeah, and uh, these two guys are right on the bubble as well. So Piet is right on the bubble in 12th place. Um, it's uh, between the man and P3. It's just one point. So all these uh, spots here for Marco Piek is absolutely critical right now. And yet, he's not even in the top 10. He'll just score uh, a couple of points. There is one point for every position that he gains uh, up until he gets up to fourth position, which obviously he will not. Uh, so it is little by little, but at least he's got a kind of a queue of cars in front and another spinner there on the left-hand side. That was Xavier Sanchez, I think. The Heike 360 uh, is out. Simone Pret loses the position as well. Uh, there is Heike, who's uh, got himself forward and another influencer facing the wrong direction. Why is that corner so difficult? Your downhill uh, braking and that right turn just seeming to catch out a few people right now. Yeah, it's really, really difficult because you, as you go in there, you're braking and cornering at the same time. And as you go down the hill, the rear end gets really, really light. And a um, huge amount of time to be gained in there if you time it absolutely perfectly, if you've ever driven there. You know, you can either lock a front brake, run wide, or under brake the car as you go in and lose a bunch of time. But when you nail it and get it perfect, you gain so much. And that's uh, one of the most difficult corners on the entire circuit in terms of uh, car balance timing-wise between brake to throttle. Right, so our drivers at the moment who have qualified then, Erhan Jujowski, Jacob Brzezinski, you would expect both of those two. Uh, Johannes Varner, our race two leader right now, uh, he's got himself some good positions because uh, where did Varner finish? He finished 13th, so he picked up a couple of spots, but the, the skew to uh, the winning margin, five points between first and second, and actually nine points between first and third, means that Varner is doing uh, a great job. And actually, look at the space he's got. I don't know whether yuyovsky has got enough time left to catch him. Looking for a team. Well, this is a great way to show off uh, Johannes Varner, if there are any teams out there watching this evening, here is a German who is about to qualify into the finals of our Porsche Community Challenge and has a chance to race against some works factory Porsche drivers next week at an unknown track with an unknown car. Uh, I don't think I'm allowed to say anything about that other than Porsche Instagram. You will be able to vote as fans, as drivers, as to which car uh, we will be racing in next week with our works drivers. Uh, qualifiers David Tocicelli and Adam Pishnesk with Marco Piek at the moment. One point away and not qualifying, but I see he's up to ninth now, so that may have changed. Yep, exactly. And obviously, it's really, really cool. I think it's great for the community um, that you can definitely choose to track in the car for next week. So, I've been doing a couple of races where you just turn up into the stream and know what you're going to race. So I think that's going to be similar for all of these guys uh, that are qualifying for the final next week. And I can't wait for the final because we've had such great racing between all of these guys, different winners each week. And now we're going to bring back 
all the previous winners, throw in a couple factory drivers, um, and it's going to be amazing. And obviously with the event format with the reverse grid as well that we've been doing has made the racing absolutely awesome. I'm really curious to see how my colleagues go. Um, obviously <laughs> representing Porsche and, um, and us real world racers. Um, they've got big pressure on their shoulders. They won't want to do badly, that's for sure. Here comes Jacob no. Brzezinski. Can't find a way through there. No, no, exactly. But that's classic spa. You know, the car in front runs slightly wide. Now you've got the crossover. And now you look um, down into the first corner to make a move. And that's what makes spa such a great track to go racing at. So Adam Pijneski now is not qualifying because Marco Piet has managed to move himself up into ninth. There he is. Uh, David Toccacelli is now the man who is kind of on the bubble, if you like. He is qualifying in fifth. Uh, at the moment, sits in fourth position. But if he loses a place from fourth down to fifth, then he will not qualify, and um, Adam Pijnesk will qualify. So this is crucial, and Brzezinski is the man who's going to take it away from him. Down the inside, Brzezinski doesn't need this position to qualify, but he takes it anyway, and that means Toccacelli does not qualify into next week. Of course, though, we still have over 10 minutes remaining, so things can still change. But uh, Varna, Jajowski, Pijnesk, Brzezinski, the top four would all qualify through into next week. Such is our performance and the ability to overtake around Spa Fragelshot. Now, I just hope that you as a community uh, vote for a cool car and a cool track. I don't want any of these modern day things. It's a bit of a thought process that I've had this week, considering I'm doing six different streams. We're all using modern day tracks, modern day cars. Let's see something cool. Last week in the Sil at Silverstone National, how cool was it to see the 1990s uh, first iteration of the cup car? Let's see a classic. And they're harder to drive, and they're more spectacular. So basically, you want to see the 964 again? Uh, there are a couple of different options on the uh, on race room including a Group C car. I don't know if, whether that's on off, uh, but if it is, uh, vote Group C. It might be hard to drive, but wow, that would be cool. Actually, that would be really cool. Group C, that's one right. of my favorite Porsches that I've never ever driven that I really, really want to drive. You need to get onto them and come and do a uh, Festival of Speed or something like that. Yeah, so I've sat in it, I've learned all about it, um, but I have never had the chance to go out on track yet. As um, Yoski just lost his yeah. spot. He was up to second place and uh, he must have made a mistake and now he's back into, into third. Yeah, so Pijnesh is up to second. That cements his uh, qualifying position right now, but we wouldn't expect him to stay there for long. Yoski somewhere with an error, not a big error though, but enough of an error to drop him a position and to give Johannes Werner a, a very good advantage. Ooh, was that a bit of bump drafting perhaps? Yeah, it looks like a lot of pump drafting, actually. I'm quite surprised. <laughs> Yoyoski is not keen uh, on overtaking here. Uh, he's just bump drafted uh, Pijnesk all the way down the Camel Strait. Now, not advisable in real life. Yeah, I'm just thinking, though, aren't those two teammates? Possibly. They are, they? will be able to, if he switches to second, we'll be able to see the team name. But I think you're right. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they are. And they might be using the draft just to sort of cement themselves away from uh, fourth and fifth place and make sure that Adam definitely makes it into the final. Um, especially with what we just saw with the bump drafting there. Maybe it's a little bit of team tactics, just to put it out there. You know, no, I think you're absolutely right. Confirmation there, they're both from AAA Esports. Your memory is better than mine. Uh, and uh, our race director being able to show the two of them. And uh, there was no attempt whatsoever to pass but if you do that in real life surely the exhaust is going directly into your air intake on the front end of the Porsche uh, and you're just going to overheat right? Yeah you overheat after a few laps but it's generally not too bad um, for a couple laps you can bump drive because obviously you're not right behind it depends also on what part of the race normally you get a lot of rubber build up and dirt and stuff like that which affects the, the engine temp during the race so um, you know, you can do it at the start of the race, but at the end, it's, it's a lot more difficult. 
And just how different does this car feel to uh, driving a GT3? Because, you know, to a layman, they, don't, they look a bit more spectacular. They look a bit more they're like a buff man. You know, they've got muscles. They've got flared wheel arches. But they don't look hugely different. They're both Porsches. They're both 911s. But do they feel very different? Yeah, they're very, very different in themselves. I mean, the first big point is that this car is actually mid-engine, um, which is the first ever, you know, mid-engine race car for a long, long time, um, especially in a 911 body shell. So, um, you know, that already makes it really, really different. As we see, they're definitely bump drafting each other, and they're definitely using it to get away from each other. If you uh, think there's a bit of team tactics here going on. But yeah, it's really, really different from the GT3 R. Obviously, the engine position starts off with it. There's a lot more downforce, though, a bit slower on the straight, but uh, pouring force-wise, they are awesome. So uh, phenomenal cars to drive, obviously, without the ABS as well. Makes it quite the challenge for the drivers um, as well. But we absolutely love them, and we run on confidential tyres. And when you say confidential tyre, everyone says, what is that? It's a custom-built tyre for that car. Um, which we do a lot of tyre testing with our um, partner Michelin and uh, it's still a bit of a tyre fight between the manufacturers so we can choose different types of tyres and that's also what makes this uh, form of GTE Pro and uh, GTLM racing really, really interesting. Very cool. Another fact I did not know. You're full of them. Uh, very, very good. Uh, so... Which, which part was that? that I didn't, didn't know, know about the tyres. didn't know about the tyres. Really? Yeah, I didn't know they were called confidential tyres. Yeah, they are. We also run them in Nürburgring. You run the confidential tyres too. Okay. Gosh, that's yeah. going to be quite a, a month for the works drivers to have 24 hours of Nürburgring. I think the next week is going to be the 24 hours of Le Mans in uh, September. And I think, hopefully, uh, confinement will allow us to do it. But that is going to be quite the couple of weeks for, for all of the drivers. Yes, and we did it this year as well. We did Le Mans and then Nürburgring back to back. And if anyone wants to get a bit of experience of what that's like, there's a fantastic uh, documentary called Endurance that came out with Porsche. They were really, really awesome in allowing a lot of behind the scenes uh, footage of that. So if you haven't seen it, I would definitely suggest you go out and see it because it's uh, an awesome motorsport documentary behind the scenes of what it's like to race at Porsche and it's uh, really really cool and really awesome. I think it's still, I think there's still a link in my bio on Instagram if anyone's looking up uh, how to find it. Awesome, we'll get the trailer on uh, for next week, why not? It does make it happen. Uh, Jajowski bump drafting his teammate but behind them good battle going on and I think Brzezinski may have got himself ahead of Tocicelli now, so Tocicelli is definitely not qualified because of this. Uh, at least Tocicelli has managed to stick with Brzezinski, um, and I wonder whether there's anybody that can get to uh, these drivers in terms of maybe on TeamSpeak or, or Discord or whatever, and tell them, um, you know, that effectively, if Brzezinski stays ahead of Tocicelli, uh, Brzezinski takes away Tocicelli's opportunity to qualify, whereas the other way around, there is still a possibility of the Italian getting through. At the moment, Pijanesk is being helped to qualify by his teammate Jajowski. Uh, and uh, Marco Piek is in ninth position and qualifying. Um, but Tocicelli is not. Yeah, and that's what also just shows how close this competition is. Because, you know, as we're talking about the last four minutes of the race, the spots uh, for the final berth into this championship race is changing constantly as these passes and as the action's happening, which is awesome for us. I wouldn't want to be the director in the background trying to work all this out, but uh, it's phenomenal and it's just what we expect when we talk about this community racing. Absolutely, and our final is next week. Unknown tracks, unknown cars, but uh, 15 of the best known race room drivers in the world uh, and a couple of very very well known real world Porsche drivers that are probably going to be a bit rubbish um, it's not going to be easy for them whatsoever to compete with the very very best and I do I do hope they've been practicing because uh, they will need to although to be fair if it's a vote from the community uh, for the track and car they don't even know what to practice on. It's going to be really, really difficult. But you can just practice everything. 
Ooh, every Porsche that there is on uh, on race room and every track, I think that would be quite a lot. But uh, hope maybe uh, maybe our com uh, our coordinator will be giving them extra little tips to help them out. Here's Simone Pret, 11th position. Uh, looks like a bit of damage from Simone, and that is why they've not been able to make the progress uh, to qualify. Because of course uh, he was was he third? Uh, he was well up there in no, he's fourth in race one. He's got himself up to tenth. And that will put him close to qualification. But really, Simone needs a couple more positions. And I don't think he's going to have enough time to get himself into a qualification position. And somewhere along the line, uh, the damage to this car has kind of will, will have slowed him down. A, a 2.13 is his fastest lap. Here's the leader, though, Johannes Varner. No team for him. And absolutely clear of everybody else uh, where did he finish in race 13th in race one so a couple of points but this will be enough for him to qualify into the final and i reckon he'll be one of very few privateers uh, to get himself into that final so a great effort from johannes and uh, the two triple a cars are coming behind but they're nowhere near close enough uh, to make this happen and he's going to click on to the last lap uh, as he goes across the line this time Yep, and it's been a phenomenal performance. Hopefully he has a team for next week. That's going to yeah. be interesting to see if his advertising campaign's going to work out uh, with him. And then obviously a lot of teamwork going on there as uh, we're looking at the final spots here. The battle for 6th, 7th and 8th is still going on as we've entered the last lap of the race here. Joachim Urena, we've seen him all three weeks of our challenge he's obviously an incredibly good hot lapper but when it comes to racing he's not quite got the pace to get himself qualified he's been there and thereabouts each week and he's there and thereabouts here uh, but unfortunately just not quite enough points marco piek is the last of our qualifiers right now uh, sitting there uh, in fifth eighth position in this race but fifth overall and uh, i think we won't see him. He might even get another position here. Who's that in front of him? Is that a back marker or is that Yurena just looking very, very second hand? Uh, no, that's uh, Nequib. Yes, it's Nequib, been yeah. looking second hand for the whole race. And he was actually leading the first race by a country mile and then had an unknown problem that we still don't know what's actually happened. And he sort of finished sixth in the first race and now holding on for dear life for sixth in this one. He's had actually the pace but just a shocking run because he made a few positions on the first lap and then I think also got turned around again. So, um, you know, no luck um, for the Malaysian man. So many opportunities for these boys to race in race room. So many competitions and whilst we are still in this covid world so many big competitions uh, to show off their skills maybe not necessarily for porsche we will have our winners and the ability of course uh, thanks to our partner fanatec to win themselves a podium dd2 I wish i was racing because a dd2 podium would be right up my street as it would be for earl actually you said you needed a new steering wheel um, but here comes johannes varner uh, who has booked himself with this win a place in our final next week. The German, a faultless drive, a clean couple of laps, and he is stoked with that. Second position, Pinetsk and Yoyoski in third for AAA. Those two playing the team game. Yoyoski, the number one point scorer in the end. Brzezinski and Tokicelli come across the line together as well. And the Quib will pick up sixth in this one. Yurena seventh. Piek in eighth position as they come across the line right now. Uh, Pret down in 10th. Peter Krippner drops to 11th by the end. Brandon Abraham in 12th. Sanchez 13th. Mohamed Ali 14th. Jesper Eriksson only 15th. And then come of our influences with Yaroslav Hosnik, uh, who amazing job in the first couple of laps to be right at the sharp end of the field. Technical issues for the Czech driver and sadly 20th by the end. There is the results. It was a two second gap in the end. Jajowski was the fastest man out on track today and he is the best of our qualifiers. Having missed out a race in week one, he is now in the hunt for the finals.
Pizniewski also qualifying. Brzezinski, Tokicelli missing out, but Piek in eighth, enough to get him through. All of these results, of course, will be provisional because race uh, direction will take a look at all the incidents and make sure they were fair. And we will find out next time, uh, this time next week, who those five are. But I don't think there is anything too much of a problem uh, Earl, in terms of the moves that we saw anyway. We shouldn't see too many penalty points as we saw in the first two weeks. They've kind of learnt their lesson. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I learned as well that they've got penalty points on their licence, so they need to uh, keep it clean. And another funny little fact is Honzik, with his hardware issues, started shifting with his keyboard at the end of the race. So obviously having a few gearbox troubles on his rig and uh, converting to a keyboard. And if anyone knows how hard that is, trying to play these games and be as fast as they are then with a keyboard is uh, pretty impressive and uh, good improvisation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, a shame, really, that none of our influencers managed to get through into the final because uh, they did provide us a lot of entertainment. We are in this virtual world and we're really enjoying being in it, but there was and there is and there will always be racing in the real world and just to give you a taster of a flavor of what it's like to be inside a real rsr let's go on board at sebring and a lap around the crazy sebring circuit <laughs> How did you rate that one, Earl? Yeah, that was uh, awesome. And obviously Sebring is one of the most challenging tracks in the world. Massively, massively bumpy. And uh, brings back good memories. I wish we could just get back in the race car soon. Yeah, absolutely. Gives you that kind of tingly feeling. Come on, let's go. Uh, these guys will all be racing next week. Our top five on the left-hand side. Gujowski Brzezinski get through. Johannes Varner, Adam Pizniewski and Marco Payek and David Tokacelli missing out by the slimmest of margins, as well as Mohamed Nakwib could have been for him and Simon Prep both running that second race with damage. So the vote for next week will begin on Thursday. That will decide which car and which track our finals will be part of. Our 15 drivers that qualified. So, Yuyovsky, Brzezinski, Varna, Pinyak, and Payek. Timmy Arshel, Leandro Verle, Kevin Siggy, Nikodem Brzezinski, and Kirill Antonov. And then Ben Spanky, Moritz Lerner, Mark Gasser, Emir Chian, and Jack Keithley will be joined by our influencers and 
works Porsche drivers. Make sure you get onto Porsche's Instagram channel to vote for your favorite combination of car and track. And make sure you tune in to all of Porsche's virtual racing, whether it be here at Race Room or come and support Earl on Thursday in the IMSA race. Cheer him on. He'll certainly need a little bit of encouragement and you'll probably be fed up with my voice by the end of the 90 minutes racing. Uh, Earl, looking forward to what we might see with the finals next week? I can't wait. I mean, we've followed it from the beginning. We've watched the top five progress into the final and uh, now I can't wait to see all these drivers uh, meet on an unknown circuit. I can't wait to see my colleagues and teammates give this a go in race room as well. So um, yeah, very, very excited. And make sure everyone gets out and votes. Um, we all want to choose what they're going to race. So please uh, jump on the channels, vote, and uh, let's choose where we're going to go race next week. Awesome. Thank you very much. Earl, good luck with your racing on Thursday. Uh, I'm going to jump on race room and get a few more laps in to make sure that I understand exactly what it's like to be part of this amazing community of drivers. Thank you for joining us. The Porsche Community Legends qualifiers are over. It's finals week next week. My name is Ben Cosenduras. Alabama with me this evening. See you next time.